Hi and welcome back. In this video we're going to continue working on our simple sample site that we started in the last video and we're going to begin to add text and images to the pages so you can see how to work with that. And again I if I open up my files panel here you'll see the different um, items that I've placed created inside of here. There's our four pages. We also created a couple folders, one for JavaScript and the other four images. Now again this folder here is just the new folder that you created in the last video and these two folders right here are simply folders that we created inside of that folder. Now I've gone ahead and I've copied and pasted a couple of graphics into this images folder and you can add those just simply by dragging a couple of images into that folder wherever you placed it on your desktop and you can do this however you normally move files from one place to another either dragging and dropping or using copy and paste you just need to add images to that folder. Now. I'm going to go ahead and open up my home page which is index.html and again you're going to see that it's completely blank here. And to add text I'm simply going to go ahead and type and this works a lot like a word processor such as Microsoft Word. I'm just going to go ahead and type welcome to my website and then hit enter and I can continue to type text into this page. I went ahead and just copied and paste, uh, copied some text from another source and I'm going to paste those two paragraphs in just so you can see the way that's going to look. Now the formatting for both your text and your images is going to be done using something called CSS. And you're going to see down here you've got a limited number of things that you can do as far as formatting the text goes and most of these have to do with tag styles not CSS styles so you don't actually um, change the um, the fonts or the font sizes or the colors or anything like that in the HTML you're going to do that in the CSS and we'll see that in a video to come but for right now I do want to point your attention to a couple of items one is, let me go ahead and highlight some text here, just a block of text here. You've got bold and italic buttons here, the B and the I. Now before we click those, I want to go ahead and take a look at the code view. And you can see we looked at code view before, and most of this you're not going to understand. But I do want to point out to your attention that there are three main sections in this document there's your heading information, then there's your head section, your body section, and then there's this closing HTML mark right here. Now don't worry about what most of this means. For right now I want you to notice that in the body section you have the three paragraphs that we went ahead and added to your page. If I go into design view you can see one, two, three, paragraphs. And I'll highlight that one. When I go back into code view you'll see it highlighted the corresponding text. So what Dreamweaver is doing in design view is that when you add text to a page it's creating the HTML behind the scenes. And you can always see that HTML by going into code view here. So it's not entirely like a Word document in the fact that you just type information out. It is actually creating code for you in the background. And as we go through this series, you're going to learn how to work with these codes. At first, it's going to seem really, really intimidating, but it's not. So don't let the fact that this you don't really understand a lot of this or any of it um, discourage you at this point. We're going to be talking about a lot of these. And again, it's a lot of it is very self-explanatory. For instance, you have a P here, and this marker right here, which is called a tag, simply means that that's a paragraph of text. And this is what's called an opening tag, and this is what's called a closing tag. The only difference between the opening tag and the closing tag is the existence of this little slash mark here. And you'll see for each one of the paragraphs, you'll see both an opening and a closing paragraph tag. 
And again, just for short, those are called p-tags. P-tags. So Dreamweaver, even when you're working in Design View, is writing the HTML behind the scenes. Now, again, coming back to this B and this I button right here, I'm going to go ahead and highlight this block of text right there, just like I would inside of Microsoft Word. And I'm going to click the B button here, and you'll see that makes it bold. And again, most of the format, all of the formatting that we're going to do is going to be described in the CSS. But if I come back in here to Code View and look at that paragraph, which is right here, you're going to see the difference right off the back. I'm going to go ahead, whoops, I was one paragraph below that. I'm going to go ahead and highlight that text again. And when we come back into Code View, you can see that text has been highlighted there. And you can see that text is now contained within an opening strong tag and a closing strong tag. So even though you made the change in Design View, Dreamweaver is behind the scenes adding code to do what you want it to do. Now, changing this even a little bit further, we've got this top paragraph here that says, Welcome to my website. Well, I really mean that to be a heading for my page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that text and I'm going to come back down here to Format. And instead of Paragraph, I'm going to select Heading 1. And you'll see that makes it big. It's now bolder. You don't really have any control at this point over what it looks like, but you will in a little while. But when I come in here to Code View, again, what I want to point out to you is the fact that that P tag has been changed to an H tag. In this case, an H1 tag or a first level heading. And we have our opening heading tag there and our closing heading tag right there. So Dreamweaver is modifying the HTML behind the scenes for us as well. Now, a couple of other text items that you may want to create are bulleted and numbered lists. Bulleted and numbered lists. And you can see the bulleted list and the numbered list right down here. And in HTML, we call these unordered lists and ordered lists. And you can see the little yellow tooltip that's appearing down here when I hover over that button. An unordered list is a bulleted list by default, and an ordered list is a numbered list by default. So let's say I wanted to type a few, um, few names here. I'm going to go ahead and type in Texas, um, California, and Oregon. So I have three names there. If I highlight those, or actually, let's go ahead and look at Code View again. And you can see those three items have been added there, Texas, California, and Oregon, and they're inside of P tags. It's just labeling them as simple paragraphs. If I go into Design View, however, and highlight those, and then click this unordered list there, they become a bulleted list. And when I come in here to Code View, you can see that the HTML behind the scenes has changed. It now has a U opening UL here and a closing UL there, and then opening and closing LI tags around the actual state names. And this is an unordered list. And again, don't worry if you don't understand the code here. Just I want you just to see that the HTML is being written behind the scenes. If I was to highlight this list again and click the numbered list, the ordered list button right here, you'll see how they're now numbered. And now when I go into Code View, you can see they're labeled as OL or ordered list instead of UL. Now, a lot of people do a lot of work inside of Design View here. And that's fine up to a point. But again, a lot of times you're going to need to go into Code View and change things around. Now, changing this from a number to a bulleted list would be fairly simple just by highlighting and clicking. But if I come in here to Code View, you can see how we can actually change the code directly. If I change OL here to UL, and OL here back to UL, remember when you change the opening, you also have to change the closing and then go ahead and go back into Design View, you can see it's reverted back to a bulleted list.
So not only do changes here affect code view, changes that you make in code view will also change the way this appears in um, design view. So a couple more um, different types of text formatting. And again, when you get into CSS, that's where you can really control the way everything appears. For example, our heading here, when we made it a heading, it made the font size larger, it may have changed the font itself, but with CSS we can control all of that. And again, that's for a video a little bit later um, down the line. Now, the final thing that I want to go ahead and work with in here are images. I'm going to go ahead and place an image on this page. So I'm going to go ahead and click at the end of my second paragraph there and hit enter. And that just gives me a blank line just like it would inside of Microsoft Word. And I want to place an image in this location. So I'm going to go to the insert menu and select image. And that's going to bring up this dialog box, the select image source dialog box. And you can see it says look in here sample site so I know I'm in the site we're working in. And there's that images folder. I can double click on it. And there's a couple of images. I'm going to double click the bird ones one there. If this dialog box comes up, you can type in some alternative text to describe the image. I'm going to go ahead and just type in birds here. And then click OK. And you'll see how that graphic now appears on your page. And again, when we look at this inside of code view, you're going to see the code for that image appears here. The code for that image appears here. You can see the tag is IMG and the source is this. It's saying look in the images folder for birds. And it also gives me a width, a height, and then there's that description, that alt text right there. So very easy to add images. Another way to do that, if I just go ahead and delete that right now, is I could come directly into my files panel here and come into images and just drag that onto the page. And then my image will appear as well. So very easy to add pictures. And again, as far as formatting those, position, those pictures, changing its position, styling them a little bit, all of that you do with CSS. But the basics of adding text and images here, pretty straightforward from what we have right now. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and learn how to place links onto our page. So I'll see you in the next video.